Okay, this is week four in DSIM 5.5. We are going to cover random variables and probability distributions. These are important to our future analyses, in particular, verifying assumptions of our models, like when we get to analysis of the variance and linear regression. Uh, what we're covering here is a foundation for those particular topics. Uh, the most important distribution, of course, is the normal distribution, but we will talk more about that as well as a few others. Let's start with talking about random variables. A random variable is a variable that assumes numerical values associated with the random outcomes of an experiment, where one and only one numerical value is assigned to each sample point. The first kind of random variable is called a discrete random variable, which are random variables that can assume a countable number, finite or infinite, of values are, are called discrete. Here are a few examples of discrete random variables. It can be the number of sales calls because countable, or uh, the number of correct answered questions we can count the number of correct answers. So any value that can be counted is considered discrete. On the hand, we have continuous random variables. A continuous random variable are random variables that can assume values corresponding to any of the points contained in one or more intervals, values that are infinite and uncountable. Here are a few examples of continuous random variables. The weight of 100 people could have any particular uh, weight. There's probably a set amount, but there's any fraction of values for that. Um, see. So our first concern is with discrete probability distributions, which can be graphed, they can be in a table form, or as a function or formula and it gives the possible values of that random variable. The requirements of a discrete probability distribution are that we have the probability of all possible values of x and that those probabilities sum to one. We look at an example of probability distribution. In this example, we have two coins and we want to know the probability of getting a tails on the coins. Possibilities are that we can get zero tails, one tail, or two tails between the two coins. We have a one in four chance of getting zero tails, and the same for getting two tails. So zero and two both have a one in four chance. For getting one tail, we have two and four chances. So the first coin could have a tails, or the second coin can have a tails. Thus, we have two out of four possible chances to get a tails on those two coins. We can visualize those probabilities in many ways. The probability table is probably the easiest. We have the number of tails equals zero, there's one count, probability is 0.25. We have one tails, there's two possible outcomes that will give us that, and that gives us a 50% or 0 0.50 probability. A bar graph is also useful, especially when we want to add probabilities together. So let's say we want to know the probability of getting either zero tails or two tails. So this column here or this column here.
we can add the probability of zero tails, which is 0.25, to the probability of two tails, which is also 0.25, thus getting a probability of 0 0.5. The last alternative is to look at the formula for calculating out probability. I've created a calculator here that will take care of that, but the formula is in this box. It's not showing up right now because I'm recording, but all you have to do is put the um, number of trials or samples, your x value and your probability, and everything else will calculate out. So we can create summary statistics for these discrete random variables. In this case, it is a discrete binomial random variable for the heads and tails example. The mean is found by multiplying the sample size in times the probability you are interested in. The variance is found by taking the weighted average of each of the values of x times the probability of that particular outcome of x. On that same spreadsheet, you should be able to calculate those values out. If you take your probability p and your sample size n, it will calculate the mean, variance, and standard deviation. That's it. It's only for a binomial random variable. So a binomial distribution is built off of a variable that can have only two outcomes, such as heads or tails, or the number of correct answers on a test. You are either right or wrong, and thus there are still two potential outcomes. When we calculate probabilities for a binomial random variable, we will, we will require a sample size n. There can be only two possible outcomes for each sample or trial, and the probability remains constant on each of those samples. So this is the formula from above uh, with a little bit better explanation, and it's the um, corresponds to the small calculator on the first sheet in the Excel file on the right. So we have the probability that we're interested in. We have the probability of a success on a single trial. The complement here, or 1 minus p, is the q. n is our sample size or number of trials. x equals the number of successes. So in the heads and tails, the number of tails would be what our x value is, and then the number of failed trials is n minus x, which would be, in our example, the number of heads. The Poisson distribution is a discrete probability distribution that expresses the probability of a given number of events occurring in a fixed interval of time or space. These events occur with a known constant rate and independently of the time since the last event. Here are a couple of examples, but this distribution is most widely used in simulation and in queuing problems, like the number of arrivals to a cashier per hour or a bank teller. So if you're doing that kind of analysis, we'll probably talk more about Poisson distribution in a future class when we get into simulation type uh, decision analysis. So this is the formula for finding the probability of a Poisson distribution. Fortunately, Excel has a built-in function to take care of this for us. I've made a Poisson calculator. All you have to do is put in your x value and the mean. So if your x is 5 and your mean is 5.4, it will give you the probabilities of each of these associated potentials.
normal distribution is the most important because most of the statistical tests we run assume a normal distribution. Hence, if you pay attention to number three, it's a basis for classical statistical inference. The normal distribution is your typical bell-shaped curve, and the mean, median, and mode are all equal. It also has a skewness of zero and a kurtosis of three. We use the normal distribution to find the probability under the curve. This gets into calculus, so we won't go that far into proving the formula, but we will want to find the area under a curve tails of the distribution. So typically one or both tails, because that is how we find, um, or that's how we do our hypothesis testing. So we use the, uh, or this property of a normal distribution lets us do the hypothesis test and calculate out a z-score, which we will later use to calculate out our p-value. I have a small calculator here. You put the mean, your standard deviation, and your x, and it will calculate out the z-score. last distribution I want to discuss is called the uniform distribution and is a continuous distribution that has an equally likely or an equal likelihood of occurrence. In this distribution, we find the probability between two points, which is the uniform frequency function. We can also calculate our summary statistics on this distribution, in particular, the mean and the standard deviation. And on the last tab, I have how you calculate those. So you'll have your D and C values. You input them in, and it will calculate out function, the mean, standard deviation, as well as probability between these two points. So chapter four hopefully isn't too hard. It's another basis for what we're doing in the future kind of a review for the major things we're going to use to actually make decisions. So I will see you guys in October. Um, I'll post, I'll try to post one of these videos each week covering the key points and the material for each of these chapters.